And let's get another check of weather with our chief meteorologist, Dan Sianca, where he's been tracking all this active weather for us. Dan, will that rain possibly impact, you know, New Year's plans that you might have in mind? Y yes, possibly, although it's looking drier by midnight on New Year's Eve, so that's some good news. The, the system is trending a little bit earlier, so maybe good news if you're planning on having a, some sort of soiree that evening. As we look at this, the radar picture tonight, we're still seeing some light precipitation moving through the region. Just had a light shower here in Salinas not too long ago, and this is going to continue on and off throughout the overnight hours. Let's so take a live look from Domenico's on the wharf. You can see that it's looking rather tranquil out there. You can see perhaps the city lights reflecting on some low clouds, and there's a lot of moisture in the air right now. And while I don't expect widespread fog overnight or anything, we'll have the potential for some reduced visibility due to all of that moisture in the air. Moisture is a good thing. We'll take more of it as we take a look at our drought update. It's drought update Thursday, by the way. And here's a current look at the status of the drought across the state. We have no change this week. 98% of the state remains in moderate drought. 81% in severe drought, 36 in extreme drought, and 7% of the state, basically the San Joaquin Valley in that exceptional drought. Now here locally, we remain in mostly uh, moderate to severe drought with a small portion still in extreme drought. With that said, I do expect some reduction in drought status for most of Northern California, especially over the next couple of weeks. It just looks like it's going to keep raining for the next couple of weeks, and that's some good news for us. And the snowpack numbers are pretty good. Our statewide snowpack is 156% of normal. It's highest in the south, and we're going to add a ton of new snow, especially in the north over the next seven days. So these numbers will keep going up. We're already about half of where we should be by uh, the beginning of April, which is kind of the benchmark day where the snowpack typically is at its deepest before it starts to melt too much and it overcompensates for anything that or compensates rather for any snow that's being added. So we're watching that, but some good news out there. Um, and here's a lot of rain across the state, mostly light here on the central coast. It is snowing in the Sierra Nevada. All of this moisture streaming in uh, as part of an atmospheric river. Now, this atmospheric river had already moved through our area on Tuesday. It swashed to the south and then it buckled back to the north. And as it did so, we're kind of on the edge of the spray, if you will. And we can actually trace the origin of this past Hawaii. Some people are identifying it as a Pineapple Express. Typically, that means the origin is very, very close to Hawaii, like comes right across Hawaii. But really, this is coming from all the way across the Pacific. There is some moisture being moved in from Hawaii, but it's not a true Pineapple Express system. That may not be a big deal to you, but I just wanted to explain it in case you saw that. The other thing is, take a look at this as we look here. We got a storm system here. We've got a smaller system here, another one here, another strong one here, another one here, and here. All of these systems, they've got a fresh set of fuel coming in across the Pacific, and they will use it to create heavy rain. And we're going to see one of those systems come through on Saturday. So here's a look at our future moisture. The moisture tap here, it gets drawn up ahead of a system which really pulls it in on Saturday. Then it's going to pass through our area once again. We get a bit of a break on Sunday and Monday and then late Monday into Tuesday. That next system comes through, tapped into the atmospheric river. Later on in the week next week, we've got another system tapping into atmospheric river moisture. And you can see that one coming through. Yeah, it's just going to keep going, it looks like, for the next couple of weeks. We're going to see some hefty rainfall total, so flooding is on our minds in the forecast and something you need to be aware of. Now, at the moment, I'm not expecting any crazy major river flooding or anything like that, but certainly flooding of areas that don't drain very well. And if we get a couple of these systems back to back, our creeks are going to get high. Um, so if you live down in an area that floods every once in a while, every few years, uh, I'd have some sandbags ready. I'd have an escape plan ready because we're going to see a couple weeks of rain here, it looks like, and it's going to put a stress on the drainage system, something you need to be aware of. So here's a look at future cast overnight. We're going to continue to see rounds of light showers kind of moving in from the northwest, and then below that, we'll start to see the stronger southerly flow kick in, which is also a moist flow, and it's going to start pushing moisture up into the coastal mountains. So we've had showers just kind of coming across the entire area, and then during the day tomorrow, we'll see a little bit more focus on those coastal hills as that moisture is shoved up into the hills. Inland areas tomorrow will become mostly cloudy. I think we'll see the sun poke through in some of the valleys occasionally. And the southerly winds coming through will actually warm us up quite a bit. I'll see many places will see high temperatures, five to 10 degrees warmer than yesterday or today rather, um, because of that southerly flow. So uh, while we won't see a lot of sunshine tomorrow, I think we will see some inland and it'll feel much more mild to you. And then late tomorrow night into Saturday, we'll really see that uh, coastal mountain rain machine get going. 
And then as the cold front comes through late Saturday morning, we'll put some moderate to heavy rain on top of that, again, which will stress the system out there. So we're going to add three to six more inches in our coastal mountains, a couple more inches around the coastal cities. And again, that's going to cause some issues with the rain that we've had over the last week. Here's 6 p.m. New Year's Eve. Notice the bulk of the rain has now moved south. So we're looking a little more confident by midnight that outside of a little bit of drizzle here or there, things will be dry. Uh, future cast moisture in between now and then, midnight, well, the end of 2022, looking pretty hefty in those mountains. A few more inches, certainly possible. So lots to watch out for. And of course, I'll be here tomorrow in the morning at night and then all day during on Saturday to make sure that you're up to date with everything. Here's my forecast overnight. We're gonna go through these pretty quickly. Temperatures only dropping into the 50s for many locations overnight and then highs back in the upper 50s across Santa Cruz County. We head south and east, we'll start seeing 60s for highs tomorrow. 63 in Salinas. Your high today was only 55, so quite a bit warmer. 62 in Marina, 61 in Hollister. Monterey Peninsula, even some 60s after lows in the 50s overnight. We'll get to 61 in Monterey and 63 just outside on the edge of the peninsula there in Seaside. And then down south, look at the Salinas Valley, mid 60s tomorrow afternoon. Greenfield, the heart of the valley. And the hot spot tomorrow, 66 degrees. So very warm day tomorrow. Well, not very warm, but certainly warmer than we have been. And probably the warmest of the next seven days. Rain heavy at times on Saturday. We're dry on Sunday. A system late Monday into Tuesday will bring some rain. We're watching Wednesday as a weak system could come through. A better chance on Thursday of next week. A lot of wind this week too, or next week I should say. And uh, inland areas, same story here. Lots of rain to watch out for. Please stay tuned to the forecast, especially if you live in areas near water. All right, thanks so much for that, Dan.